Welcome back to the Fierce Fish First Tech Challenge programming tutorial series. Our goal in this series is to provide simple and straightforward guidance in programming an FTC robot. And in today's video, we are going to be looking at some Mechanum Drive code. Now, a lot of people have commented to our team at the tournaments that our Mechanum chassis moves like so smooth and fast compared to like other ones that they've seen or theirs in comparison. And part of that is the hardware, how we have it set up, but a lot of it is due to the programming. And we're going to look at some ways that we can give the driver the most control over the chassis itself while still making it easy for them to control. So, of course, we're going to only declare just our four motors, and I have them named as such. As we scroll through here, I have them initialized. I set the right ones to reverse because I feel like in teleop, it's just easier to, if your robot has a f set front, which I do highly recommend, it makes it a lot easier for the driver to control. I'm sure our driver will agree with this. And setting the right ones forward makes it so that when you say like set the motor powers, set them all to one, it's going to go forward. And whereas if you set the left ones, it's going to go backward because of the way it's set up or because of the way the sticks are set up. So we also have the brakes and the, we're not using any encoder action. So now let's go in here and we're going to start out by creating a couple of variables. We're actually going to set this up kind of like a tank drive and then go off of that. So we're going to do a float variable and I'm just going to call this right and this is going to equal gamepad one dot right stick y. That way, that value, whatever it is, is whatever's on that right stick is going to be saved on the variable right. And let's do the same for the left stick on gamepad one. Just like that. Now let's get into actually controlling the robot movement. Let's use an if loop. So we're going to say, we're going to want if, let's say we're being moved, if it's moving. This is the way we set it up, and I think this is a very effective way of setting it up. So we're going to go like if gamepad1.leftstick y, let's start with left stick, if it is greater than 0.1, or, where's the or? Or, gamepad one dot left stick y is less than negative point one. Or, gamepad one right stick y is greater than point one. Or, gamepad one dot right stick y is less than negative point one. That is a very long if statement, so let's review that. It's if left stick y is greater than one, or left stick y less than one, or less than negative point one, or right stick y greater than point one, right stick y less than negative point one. So that whenever a stick is being moved, we're going to set that motor power. So the way we're going to do this, let's start with back left, that set power, and we're going to want to set it to left. And then front left. I don't know why I started with back, honestly. But basically, we're going to set the left side motor powers to the left stick, and then the right side motor powers to the right stick. And that's going to be right and back right, right. So no matter what, it's going to be going through this. And this is basically tank drive. And then else, we're going to set the powers to zero. So.
And while I'm doing this, let's just explain a bit about strafing and how I like to think of strafing. So strafing, it's like, I like to think of it as like, the wheels that are going in towards each other is the way that the robot is moving. So if we want, and then the ones that are moving away is where it's not going. So if we think about that, let's go, actually, I'll t let's do the variables first. I do have some more variables that we are going to do, and it's going to be, I'm going to call it left s for strafe, and that's going to equal, how did that get down there? Okay. Ugh. Equals, that's going to be the left trigger. And then similarly for right s for straight s for strafe, is going to be the right trigger. So now here is how you would do that in your code. Let's do else if, and it's going to be gamepad one dot right trigger if that is greater than point one. We are going to, and that annoys me, so I'm going to do that. We are going to set the motor powers. So if we want it to move to the right, of course, the front left is going to have to go backwards. And it's going, just going to be negative right s. And then we also want, oops, the um, back right to go backwards as well. So, What, how did that? And that's going to be negative right s. And then we're going to just set the um, front right to regular right s. And then the back left to right s. So I hope you were able to track along through that whole sequence because I kind of just tried to brainstorm out loud of the way I want it to go and sounds because I kind of explains how we want the wheels to move in. So if we look at the left side, like the back left is going forward and the front left is going backward. So we actually did this wrong. It needs to be like this because we want the back left going there we want the left ones going away from each other because we're, we want to move to the right so we want the back right to be going forward and the front right to be going backward see it's just it's kind of can, can be confusing at times and honestly if you think about it why we're using the triggers is because strafing is like a secondary motion. If we're like strafing, of course, it's not like, what am I trying to say? It's not a primary motion. We only use strafing for like when we're correcting ourselves when we're, like in Skystone, when we were intaking a block or when we were building, of course, building was a big one. So that would be that. And then we're gonna do another else if statement. It's gonna be gamepad one dot left trigger. And I'm just going to take a shortcut here, copy, and paste that, and change that all up. So now if you look at it, the front left is going backwards, and then the back left is going forwards. So then we're going to, oops, if we want it to be greater than 0.1. So then if we think about it again, front left going backwards, back left going forwards, so they're going towards each other, which means the robot is going to move in that direction, and then the other ones have to be opposite of each other as well. And then this is a pretty 
effective mechanism drive sequence because like I said the strafing is not the primary motion and, you're not, and strafing slower too so it's of course it's not the primary motion we want it to be set up kind of like a tank drive where we're going to be as fast as possible on the field and I think that's it for this video so we learned a little bit about some mechanum teleop for a robot centric drive and from all of us here at Fierce Fish, we hope you have a great day.